barrels of sprinkling holy water. And I heard a, a rather deep voice uh, behind me say, get out. Tonight on the 85 Grave Show, we explore the infamous Amityville Horror. First, a narrative recap of the DeFeo murders and the following 28-day residency of the Lutz family. Then, an in-studio discussion of the resulting book, movies, and Amityville phenomenon. Lastly, we take you with us on our trip to Amityville, New York, where we visit the house and the DeFeo graves. He came, he opened the door, and he was screaming, come on, help me, somebody shot my mother and father. And everyone ran out of the bar, and that was it. They Did all took go? off. No, I had to stay, I was 10 anymore. They all jumped in his car and took off. Ronald DeFeo Jr., known by friends and family as Butch, was a troubled young man born in Brooklyn, New York, to a comfortable, upper-middle-class family. As a child, he was bullied in school over his weight, which contributed to an ever-growing pattern of antisocial and violent behavior. After failed attempts at getting Butch psychiatric treatment, his parents, Ronald Sr. and Luis DeFeo, attempted to placate Butch by spoiling him with expensive gifts. This tactic only added to his growing behavioral issues. By the age of 17, Butch was a heavy LSD and heroin user. Butch and his father shared a strained relationship. Ronald Sr. was overbearing with seemingly inadequate parenting skills. When Butch was finally expelled from school, he was rewarded with a position in the family business, a Buick dealership. Butch was paid weekly, despite the fact that he did not always show up for work. Eventually, when the family handouts and paychecks were not enough to cover his drug habits and lifestyle, he began to embezzle from the Buick dealership. Around this time, Butch started to use guns. He had threatened to shoot a friend during a hunting trip, and at one point, Butch even attempted to kill his father during an argument his parents were having. Butch pointed the weapon and pulled the trigger, but a rifle malfunction thwarted the potential killing as the gun did not fire. Shortly after the rifle incident between Butch and his father, the Buick dealership became aware of Butch's embezzlement. The police were called and he was questioned. Infuriated, Butch threatened to kill his father. His threats were not taken seriously. November 13, 1974, started out as a typical winter Wednesday in the quiet Long Island village of Amityville, New York. It unfortunately turned into a family's worst nightmare. Butch slaughtered his entire family on this night as they peacefully slept inside their bedrooms on 112 Ocean Avenue. He was eventually tried and convicted of killing both of his parents, Ronald Sr. and Louise, his two brothers, Mark and John Matthew, and two sisters, Dawn and Allison, with a rifle that none of the neighbors seemed to hear on that quiet night at 3.15 a.m. Weather reports claimed there was some rain, wind, and fog that frightful night. However, no thunder, snow, or hail. Why hadn't the neighbors heard any rifle shots? Why hadn't the DeFeo family themselves woken up to any rifle shots? Each were shot one by one while sleeping on their stomachs. At first, detectives thought that Butch drugged the family during dinner, and that is why they all slept so soundly and were not awoken by any of the shots. However, that proved to be false as they found zero evidence of sedatives in their blood. To double up on this mystery, there was no silencer found on Butch's rifle. Some things can never be explained. On December 16, 1975, the Lutz family moved into 112 Ocean Avenue. Thirteen months had passed since the family tragedy of its former residence. Twelve days earlier, Ronald DeFeo Jr. had been sentenced to life in prison for the heinous murders inside the home. The young couple thought it appropriate that their new home came with a sign in the front yard that read, High Hopes. 
Though the neighborhood was far beyond their income level, the home itself was priced at a curiously low $80,000. With a little belt tightening, George and Kathy, along with their three children, Daniel, Christopher, and Missy, had found their dream home. The family, aware of the murders the previous fall, asked a local priest to come and bless the home on move-in day. While the family explored the new property, Father Ralph Pecorero sauntered through the home, sprinkling holy water and reciting scripture in the process of blessing the new home for the young family. Upon entering the sewing room, Father Pecorero noticed a drastic and sudden temperature drop. A few moments later, he heard a deep, startling voice behind him bellow the words, Get out. Startled, the priest began to wrap up his activities. Before he could leave the room, he felt a sudden cold slap to the face despite there being no one else present. In the following weeks, Father Pecorero experienced a sharp decline in health as well as an assortment of blisters. These ailments seemed to worsen any time he made attempts at warning the young family of the potential dangers in their new home. The Lutzes, meanwhile, experienced an escalating assortment of unnerving and sometimes paranormal occurrences. After only 28 days, the family fled for good, selling their dream home at a substantial loss while instructing intermediaries to sell everything, including the furniture and equipment they had purchased from the DeFeo's estate. The Lutz family and the events they experienced in the Amityville house inspired author Jay Anson to write the book The Amityville Horror in 1977, which then led to the movie released with the same name in 1979. Numerous other books have been written, and a remake of the movie was released in 2005, amongst others. A prequel to the 1979 movie is being released in February of this year, called the Amityville Murders. In the Amityville Horror, the ghost told them to get out the house. Now that's a hint and a half for your ass. A ghost say, get the fuck out, I would just tip the fuck out the door. I would have been in the house and said, oh baby, this is beautiful. We got a chandelier hanging up here, kids outside playing, it's a beautiful neighborhood. We ain't got nothing to wear. I really love them, this is really nice. Too bad we can't stay, baby. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Eddie Murphy. Hey, you guys. Welcome to the 85 Grave Show. I'm Lauren Lucifer. I'm Bobby Blood. Welcome back. <laughs> I've had a couple more uh, equipment problems, of course, but our studio is almost Up stationary and set and where all we have to do is come in and hit the record button and go, but it hasn't quite been that simple. True. Can never be that easy, right? Yeah, what can you do? You know? <laughs> so, we'll get it, we'll get it. Hope you guys liked our uh, little true crime intro. This episode warrants that. We had to kind of lay out the DeFeo murders first. Yeah. Cut through the bullshit so we don't talk about it for two hours. <laughs> get a little serious with the narration. That was fun. That was a lot of fun. I hope you guys liked that. I hope so too because there's going to be more of it. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> so yeah, that was um, Eddie Murphy from Delirious. With that red leather, right, yeah, outfit. <laughs> yeah, and for a major comedian like Eddie Murphy to even be making jokes about it, I mean, that, that shows what a huge phenomenon this whole story was. True. Know? I know a lot of people don't know this because we know people that are, you know, kind of younger in their 20s and whatnot that... They're aware of the Amityville Horror, and they're aware of the haunted house, and the, the stories and all that, but they're not aware that there was a book. They're not aware that the DeFeo murders were real. You know, of course, the Amityville Horror story with the Lutzes, that's open for debate, whether or not it was a hoax or they were psychotic or whatever. Yeah, I believe the Lutzes, though. Yeah, I believe definitely some of it. Right, but yeah. But what's not up for debate is the DeFeo murders that happened before they moved in. So, um, you know, any of you youngsters out there or new horror fans or whatever, that really happened. The uh, murders. The guy killed his whole family. Butch. Butch. <laughs> Big Butch. 
<laughs> and that guy, man, like, he, you know, there's been so many different theories about, you know, one minute he says he didn't do it. Then he says he did it because he was doped up. Then he says his sister did it, and then he killed her because she killed his family. And I think the most recent one that I saw, an interview of him from prison, where he said that um, something like they went in to shoot the dad and the mom, but he didn't have the heart to do it. Then his dad woke up, so he shot his dad. Then Dawn, the sister, shot his mom, and then he freaked out and spun around and accidentally shot his mom, too. It's just a bunch of <laughs> bullshit, you know? That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. And that Daniel Guinness guy, he said that he was in the infirmary, the prison uh, infirmary, with DeFeo, with Butch, and Butch told him, you know, it took him like a year or two. To like know, warm up to each other. Y- yeah, get him he kind of warmed up to yeah. him. And eventually he told him, he said something like, my family were monsters, and if I had the chance, I would kill them all again. Yeah. So, you know. But anyway. Why yeah. would that guy lie about that? I don't know. If you can't trust the... Uh, Murderer in prison. (laughs) Who can you trust? Who can you trust, right? (laughs) Yeah, it's one of those, That's this is obviously one of those mysteries that's going to die with Ronald DeFeo Jr. Yeah. Um, But it really doesn't matter. You know, he he killed him. There's no real good reason to kill your family, so fuck him. He's where he belongs. And, um, you know, whatever he did it for, whether it was greed or whatever the case, you know, that's his... uh, that's his thing to deal with. Yeah, he's and he's still alive and kicking. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> it's always the shit bags that live forever. Yeah. You know? But whatever. <laughs> Ronnie Butch shitbag. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, but um, that book, you know, uh, I remember when that book first came out, or um, it wasn't when it first came out, when, oh. I, when I first found out about it, and I read the book. I think I think I was, I think I saw the movie first, and then... Read okay. the book. The OG movie uh, with the Brolin. With the Brolin, yeah. yeah. So um, I read the book, and it was one of those books you just can't put down. I couldn't put it down. I've read it four or five times yeah. over the years, and every time I've read it, I would start it on a Monday or yeah. whatever, and it would be I'd be done with it by like Wednesday night. Yeah, you know, it's I just, so good. Yeah, and you read it. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's a page turner. It's just it goes quick. Yeah, it was really good. What did you know? What was like? Did you notice any? Uh, what was your favorite parts of it? I mean, my favorite parts, just how quick it went. The story, the father, the priest, all the stuff that, you know, was happening to him yeah. that kept going. Yeah. <laughs> um, the thing with the priest, you know, the real priest, he's done interviews. And he said that he did hear the voice tell him to get out. I don't think it screamed at him the way it was in the movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it quieter yeah it was quieter he what he did say was he said when when he was blessing the room the the room temperature changed it got really cold and then he heard the voice and then he got the fuck out you know oh my gosh yeah and then all the uh the health problems and all that that he had were real he really had that was that was true that was all real all those blisters that he was getting Mm -hmm. he couldn't contact like he would try to call you know Call the Lutzes and the phone would just like disconnect. It wouldn't happen. It was crazy. Yeah. And that's the thing with the Lutzes. They, you know, what would be their motive for buying a house? They bought it at $80,000. It was like a really discounted price, which in that neighborhood that's was, good. Really, was really low. Yeah. It would be a good price anytime. Mm-hmm. But, um, the, you know, to them, that wasn't just throwaway money. They were, they had to stretch to barely be able to afford that. Yeah. So they were just barely on that level to even buy Mm -hmm. that house. Then they left in four weeks. And I know sometimes people think, oh, well, they bailed out before the first so that, you know, because they were going to get evicted. Well, no. (laughs) Yeah, you don't get evicted out of a home you own in a month. No. No chance. No. It takes, you know, it'd probably take a year. No. And why would they want to move, pack up everything, move three kids? You know? And they didn't even pack. They just left. Yeah, Left all their shit there. Now, I've read, I I couldn't find this article or whatever it was, now, but I remember in the past, several years ago, I was looking at looking this stuff up, and it said that they did come back and do a yard sale. Oh, really? Yeah, but you know, I just I can't verify that. Yeah, right, right. But it wouldn't surprise me. It wow. Wouldn't surprise me at all. So, um, but for them to, and then they sold the house at a significant loss. You know, so 
it doesn't make any sense that they would just bail out like that for any financial reasons or to make up the story. Because how would they know that this story would pick up like this? Right. There's no way they would know. And, and what did they really gain out of it? You know? I mean, George Lutz died in a house, what, two or three miles from our house right here. In Vegas. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And he was already divorced uh, from Kathy. I, I forgot for how long, but... They divorced... I think not long after all that happened. Yeah. But um they didn't last through that. No, and I think she passed away before he did. Oh. So um and the kid, what was his name? Daniel? That was one of them. I believe the kid, he's done some interviews and stuff and talked about his some stepdad. Of the things, yeah. Some of the things. They didn't really have a great there. relationship. Well, you know, I obviously <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. They had the I don't know, they had the yard sale or not, but you know, they tell this little story. It picks up in the news. Next thing you know, the house is, you know, run overrun with uh, like reporters, reporters and, stuff like that. and <clears throat> gawkers, people like you and I. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> so um, there was a couple of differences in the book between the book and the movie. Um, Jody, number one. Jody the pig. Yeah. Well, right. well, no, that was in the movie. Well, the pig was in the original movie, but in the new remake. With Ryan Reynolds, it was a little girl named Jody. Sure. That's yeah. what I gathered. Yeah, I don't know. To me, then the remake is a little too uh, new agey. <laughs> right. You know? right. I like it. I like Ryan Reynolds. I like his acting. Yeah. You know, they they did a well, you know, a good job. Yeah. But it it didn't have uh, that, that Amityville punch. Pun- yeah, it didn't have that for me. But I did love the part where the realtor is showing them the house. And yes. She gets freaked, you know, she's already freaked out, obviously, and she's real uneasy in there. Mm -hmm. And then she sees stuff and she's just like, you know. That was good acting. And she definitely wasn't going in the basement. (laughs) Yeah, that was real good. You could really feel her anxiety. Yeah. Yeah. She's like, let's sell this house, get it done, hurry up, you know, get me out of here. But the parts of like the little girl climbing up on the roof and all that, I mean, none of that, none of that even supposedly happened, so... You know, whatever. And then I haven't even bothered really watching any of the other Amityville movies. I mean, Right. There's been a bunch. There's a new one coming out, too, I think, next, in a few months or something, called The Amityville Murders. Yeah, but that's probably going to be more... About the DeFeos, Yeah, more more Mm factual-based, more nonfiction. Yeah. I'm down to see it. I I can't wait for that. Oh, yeah. I'll definitely check it out. Yeah. Um, I remember when I first saw the movie, one of the things that... I was always curious about was what was the priest like? Why was he choking? You know? Oh, yeah. You know, the flies all got on him and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, the priest did say, and the, the real priest said that there was no flies like that. He just said mm-hmm. it was the, you know, like I said, the cold room and he heard the voice. But I found out when I read the book that what was choking him up was the smell of excrement, right? Human shit. Yeah, and it was the human shit. And it was supposed uh. to be like super overpowering yeah you know then that and that's that's used, the sign of a demon being right? present yeah so yeah that's insane <laughs> yeah so what, what do you think about that what do you think do you think that uh you say you believe the lutzes i do mm-hmm. yeah. because they both gave pretty much the same accounts of what happened mm-hmm. and then there were some witnesses like the father or the priest yeah. you know and a couple other witnesses that kind of verified what they were going through yeah. And like you said, they have nothing to gain from this. I mean, that, that's a lot of turmoil to go through. Move kids. Mm-hmm. I just, I don't know. I, I believe it. I believe them. I want to believe them. Yeah. Um, I just, uh, you know, I've, now that I've felt some paranormal stuff in, mm-hmm. a, in a house I was in before, I, I get it. You know, I understand that. You know, if they were afraid of the house and he wanted to get his family out of there, I, I, I completely yeah. understand that. Um, and again, like you say, like, what did they gain? You know, in hindsight, yeah, of course they gained a lot of notoriety and they probably made a lot of money off of the whole story, but there would be no way they could have known that that would happen. Nope. You know, so, um, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. And that's a great house to leave. It's got the boathouse. It's just beautiful. Yeah, I love that house. Yeah. It's a, the neighborhood is nice. Yeah. It's beautiful. (laughs) Um, who would leave that for no reason? Yeah. I don't know. But all those Amityville dollhouse and all that crazy stuff, you know, I'm not sure. Mm-mm. 
The Ryan Reynolds movie was good, though. It was. I dug it. Yeah. I dug it. I mean, yes, he's Van Wilder. He's <laughs> comedy guy, you know, funny jokester. That, I think that was the hardest part for me was, yeah. like, I, it's hard for me to be scared of this dude, you know, because yeah. he, to me, he's the waiting guy. <laughs> oh, you know? waiting is so good. Yeah. Yeah. So it's hard for me to see him in a... Yeah. In a scary, even though he he was a great actor, he he did a great job in that movie. Yeah. He's he's a great actor. He's really good. The yeah. chopping wood scene, like I don't know, they made him just look so scary there. I thought yeah. it was good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He he definitely did the role. I just I guess I have him typecast in my yeah. own mind as just some goofball, you know. Mm-hmm. I think he was scarier than Brolin, but maybe because I'm more used to the remake than the OG movie. Yeah, but I don't know. Brolin was uh, he was a he was a creepy dude. Yeah. Yeah, I think. And I that know. was weird when, like, the face of DeFeo yeah. popped up. He, like, he saw the face of him, and they almost look exactly the same. And that, and that was one of the things, I guess, um, was it the, the priest or whoever came, somebody that had uh-huh. came by the house asked him if he was related. Right. To, to Butch. To, to Butch, yeah. Or just to that family, to the DeFeos. Yeah. Because he looks so much like That's crazy. Butch. Yeah. The beard, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. So... Yeah, who hmm, knows? That's trippy. Yeah, I guess this this is one of those things that you know we could go into a million different yeah. theories. I could, I did a lot of research on this, and I ultimately decided not to try to go down mm-hmm. every possible. You know, the best thing mm-hmm. the best thing to do is show you the you know give you the facts of the of the DeFeo murders, and then send you down the rabbit hole to <laughs> sir, research yourself. You know, yes. And the book is a great time. The movie, both movies are a great time. Both yeah. both of the the main movies, you know, I don't know about the spinoffs, like I said. Yeah, we're just talking about the OG one with Brolin and then yeah. the Ryan Reynolds one. Yeah. Those are the most popular ones, mm-hmm. Definitely. I would say. Ooh, I remember in the book when the, the little kid got his hand, like the window slammed down yeah. on his hand. In mm-hmm. the book, it was like so descriptive and that was like, it just made me cringe. And then the movie, it was like that happened again and I was yeah. like, ah. Oh. I had I rem- to look away. I remember in the book, it, it it said that his hand was smashed, like super deformed, like super flat. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It made me kind of, it was creepy. Yeah. Yeah. And then That's- the uh, the boathouse and all that stuff. It's weird to see it in real life. You yeah. Know, we'll get to that. But mm-hmm. it's, um, you know, I know he was saying, uh, DeFeo was also saying that he heard voices at the uh, bar down the street and stuff. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, he heard him. They were in his head, if anything. They weren't at the bar, yeah. the voices, but yeah. I mean, you know. Well, he was, telling, he was telling people this before. He didn't just like kill him and then make this shit up. He was telling people long before. He's like, you know, I'm hearing voices at my house. Damn. And people were just like, ah, you know, he's a, he's a dope fiend. Yeah, or know? he's just some alcoholic just yeah. at the bar or whatever. Yeah. Everybody in town knew he was a dope fiend. Yeah. So and he messed with like LSD, I guess a little bit. Yeah, oh he yeah, dabbled. LSD, heroin. I mean, you don't really yeah. dabble with that kind of yeah. stuff. That's <laughs> that's pretty hardcore. Yeah, yeah, that's that's something. That's pretty hardcore. Hallucinogenics. Yeah. So. Yeah, who knows what led him to do this? But he was convicted, and and he definitely, uh, yeah. I mean, did it. We yeah. all agree to that. He he even says it. He just you know, depending on what day of the week you yeah. ask him, <laughs> right. He'll give you a different story about right. why or how or what or who. He had made up the mob stuff and all that. Oh, that was crazy. <clears throat> yeah, but you know, I don't think I don't think the police ever put any stock into that. Nah. <clears throat> nah, they were like, You're the one. Yeah. I think honestly, I think he just I think he killed him for money. You know? How much was he gonna be left? What like an inheritance? It? Yeah, or? no, it was life insurance. I, I think s- it was two hundred thousand. Yeah, that's from what, what I was think. thinking. Which back in the day, that's you know, yeah, that's a lot. But it's a lot of money now. But especially back then, it's like a million dollars now. I mean, but he never really needed money. I guess you know he grew up okay. Well, he was stealing from the Buick the, dealership. Yeah. I mean, when, he couldn't keep up with his drug habit. Yeah, I mean, so. drugs are drugs are expensive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they say. I uh-huh. don't know. I ain't never done it, so I don't know. But. Especially not that kind of crap. <laughs> <laughs> Could be pricey. Could be a little pricey. Yeah, and you yeah. know he was obviously kind of like a spoiled kid, right? So exactly, so mean little bastard. <laughs> wow, I'm just yeah. still shocked nobody heard the gunshot or the rifle shots. I mean, the whole thing is still 
still really just creepy. It is a mystery, but it, yeah. you know, I did see one of the inter- interviews of, with him, mm-hmm. and he says, you know, when when they shot, but he he was saying that him and his sister Don were shooting mm-hmm. the, the parents. He said that they shut the doors, and the doors were like two inch, two inches thick, solid oak. Oh. So he was like giving an explanation as to how nobody heard it. Okay. I mean, I don't know if that would block yeah. out that noise, would it? Just it, wood no, or it, oak? No, it wouldn't. I mean, you've heard you've heard the shotgun out at the out at the shooting yeah. range. I mean, I've no. heard guns up close. Yeah. Many times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, but yeah. no, I don't think that would block that out. No, nothing's gonna block that out, and we know that there was no real storm going on. We looked at the weather. Right. Right. So there was like a little wind here, fog, you know, stuff like that. But it wasn't like a huge thunderstorm that could have explained that. Yeah. You know, because lightning and thunder, that will block out some stuff, you know. I hear some neighbors, (laughs) some car alarm. We got the we got these neighbors that (laughs) like there's nothing happens on our neighborhood. And these fucking guys turn their car like they don't know how to get in their car without setting off their alarm. It goes off like five times a day. Every time. (laughs) Like, get it together, bro, you know? The funny thing about that is if somebody really breaks into those idiots' car, nobody's going to think anything of it because the shit goes off all the time already. (laughs) Right. We're like, oh, there it goes again. Somebody's probably breaking into it right now. We're like, all those dumbasses don't know how to turn (laughs) their alarm off again. (laughs) Whatever. Oh, shit. (laughs) (laughs) Little vent session there. Yeah. No biggie. We're running our our, uh, audio here. I know. Like, what's up? (laughs) Trying to do a podcast up in this bitch. (laughs) But yeah. So So, that was good. uh, Yeah. But again, you know, it's best to go and look into this stuff yourself and come up with your own conclusions and shoot us an email. Shoot us a message on Instagram or go on our, you know, wherever, wherever you can find us. Yeah. Hit us up. Tell us what you think. Tell us what we missed. We love feedback and, and other extra info and tidbits and just whatever. And we know there's people out there that live in Amityville or live in New uh-huh. York or, or did live there or their parents live there. Somebody knows yeah. some inside information. You Give know. it to us. Give it to us. <laughs> we want it. <laughs> we want it because uh, even, even after the podcast is over, our fascination in this is not going to be over. Oh, yeah. Amityville, we're, we're constantly... That was, the, that was one of my favorite trips ever. It was. So, yeah, it was a great trip. Yeah. Other than getting stuck in New York. Well, yeah. Which I hate, but... That happened. I don't hate New York. I hate New York traffic. Right. It didn't ruin our Amityville trip, but yeah, that happened too. Yeah. So, I guess we should talk about our trip out there now. Yes. So, we did go. We went out to Amityville. We were... We had gone to Salem, um, and we were... we We had our flight the next day. And we're like, you know what? Let's just like, I had a bright idea. Let's let's shoot into New York, <laughs> which you don't sneak in or out of New York. You, right. With a million cars and yeah. traffic. But in my mind, it's it's only like I haven't spent months and months and months in New York already. And I should have <laughs> known better. But. You had high hopes. I had Ooh, high hopes. <laughs> pun intended. Right. Ooh, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> I had high hopes that we would be able to get out of yeah. there. So we cruise in. We roll into Amityville in the middle of the night, <clears throat> and uh, we uh, well actually no, we got there in the day. Oh no, we got no, there in the night. It was night, and yeah. then the next day is when we filmed all the all mm-hmm. the stuff. Which I'll throw this some of the footage up. Yes. Oh, you guys got to see the this podcast. Yeah. <clears throat> so we went and we checked out the um, the house. Yeah. Walked from the bar. We area. did that at night. First, we yeah, uh, yeah we. Yeah, that's right. So when we got there, we went, we hung out at the house, took some pictures, mm-hmm. really dark, and got some video. But it, again, it's really dark. Then we took, we made the walk from the house down to Henry's Bar, which is now called, um, what's that place called? B and B Clam and Fish, I think. Yeah, some seafood restaurant. Yeah. Something I like, like the that. name in the book, The Witch's Brew. Yeah. I thought you know, that's a cool name. Yeah. But anyway. They uh they had to spice it up a little, I guess. Yeah. Call it the Witch's Brew. I thought that was what it was really called yeah. until the first time I ever went to Amityville. Mm-hmm. And that was in uh 
2004. Yeah, you I had think. been there before. Yeah, I yeah. Went, well, I was out on I was on tour. I went out there, mm-hmm. and um, the guys from a band called Madball took me. <laughs> Shout out I, Madball! Right. So I was, um, you know, I'm, I've always been obsessed with this stuff. So it's all I would talk about. Oh, I can't believe we're gonna mm-hmm. play in Amityville. Oh, we gotta go see this place. So finally, they're like, "All right, dude, we'll, we'll take you to the house." You know? Yeah. So we went down there, and um, we were playing at a club that was right down the street, oh, right okay. around the corner. But it was the it was a I thought that was the old Witch's Brew. This was a long time ago, so I didn't have time, and I didn't really get like to research. research yeah. yeah. So um, we drove up there. Now at that time, you couldn't even stop in front of the house because they would immediately just call the police. Damn. And, and they'd come out, and you didn't want the, the, you know, the police bothering you out there. No, no. Because they could make your day really fucked up. Yeah, you know? no thanks. Especially if they find out you don't live there, and right. they could hold you up all day. You know? Yeah. So um, we kind of did like a drive-by, and mm-hmm. I took some pictures, and it was a really old, shitty digital camera that I had <laughs> at that time. So the pictures are really bad. I'll throw them up. But um, my big brother... I, I I took these pictures and I emailed them to him from mm-hmm. the road. Coleman. Coleman, yeah, right here. <laughs> Throw up a Coleman cam right there. Yes. Um, rest in peace. But um, yes. He uh, he looked at the pictures, and he messaged me back and he's like, "Hey man, do you see that? You know, I don't know what, I don't know what's called. I guess that figure." He says, right. "Do you see that figure right under the tree, right by the house?" I was like, "Nah." I, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. You know, he's like, yeah, it's wearing like a cowboy hat. I thought he was bullshitting with me. Right, you know? like fucking with you because you guys are jokesters. <laughs> yeah, you know, and you know, he's the one that got me into horror movies. Yeah. And, you know, he's made a lifetime out of scaring the shit out of me, you know, so I figured he was just yeah. playing with me, you know. And uh, he he took it in like Microsoft Paint and outlined it. I wish I could find that. You know, I wish I could find yeah. the pic. And he sent it to me yeah. back with it. With, know, with it circled yeah. where he was looking at. and. Immediately then I saw it and it was like so obvious. Yeah. And, and you could tell he didn't doctor it except for that no, line I, around I, it. I had the original picture. Yeah. So like if he would have, I would be like, oh, dude. I you could compare it. Yeah. yeah. Once I seen it outlined and then I looked at my original picture, it was clear as day. Yeah. And I only have two or three pictures that it could have, that it could have been. And now, you know, when we decided to do this, cover this on the podcast, I went back and I pulled those pictures in and looked and I fucking cannot, I can't see it. Yeah. I know it's one of those three pictures, hmm. but I cannot see. Maybe we'll the, throw it up and see if, if anybody can, can find it. I'll throw it up. It's really digitized, man. It's like 640 by 480. Yeah, old school shit. Old school, man. It had, it used to, it, that, that camera took floppy disks that got like, <laughs> like four megabytes of space, which is <laughs> like not even one of our cell phone pictures now, or one, by probably two pictures wow. from our cell phones would fill up these disks. And That's I was carrying insane. all these disks around on, on, on a trips on, on the yeah. road, you know, yep. and have room for all that shit. So um, I probably had the settings low to get, you know, so I could get 12 pictures out of there or something. Yeah. But um, yeah, I'll throw them up. And if anybody can find it, it was. I remember it was, it was, I'm pretty sure it was the front facing picture mm-hmm. and there's the tree and I believe there was an owl on his shoulder. Like this is with all. With a cowboy hat. With a cowboy hat. You could see eyes. And it's front facing, but it's actually the side of the house, you know, but people know oh, that. Oh, the probably. way the house is laid the out. The way it's like built. Yeah. Yeah. The weird. way the house is laid out, the, when you look at it, you think, you know, where the eyes were, mm-hmm. that's actually the side of this house. Those two windows. Yeah. The door is on the, you yeah. know, the, it faces. That's like the coolest house ever. It is in my in my world. So that was really trippy, though, man. To like yeah. go and make that walk, and, then, and it was like two in the morning when we walked from the Amityville house down yep. to Henry's, which was it was like a like I say C and C or B and B fish and clam. It's called. It's like a little in like a little strip mall area, and that's yeah. where we parked and everything. So, yeah. and then um, then then we got a motel. Um, we woke up early the next morning, but not early enough. Yeah. Went there and then, you know, we kept driving by, taking pictures, yeah. videos. Then we drove around to the side, to the back side. Yeah. I was like, there has to be a back road. We have to get this boathouse and the lake. Yeah. And of course there was a road, yeah, you know, yeah. behind it. So yeah. we got some good footage from uh, across the lake. Yeah. Are we going to throw the, those up yeah, for I'll, everybody? I'll, okay. Yeah, yeah. Cool. I'll probably play that footage over this part of the oh, podcast. Okay. 
for the people that watch us on YouTube. Yeah. You know? Yeah, everybody watch us. <laughs> yeah, go check out check out the YouTube. Like, I mean, it's one thing to hear this, and I try to cut it down a little bit for the uh, podcast portion. Yeah. But this is really a, a show. It's not just a podcast. Yeah. Like, there's always stuff that, especially in the next couple of episodes, you're going to really want to see it on YouTube yeah. because it's not just to listen to it. I mean, it'll be interesting, I hope. Hopefully. But, but to me, the real interest is going to be what's on the videos. Yeah. Um, yeah. Tune in, you guys. We got some cool shit coming up. <laughs> yeah, and that's uh, youtube.com slash the haunted room. I should I might change that URL, but not that's in a big cool. hurry. Yeah, the haunt that's cool. Yeah, it's a good it's, one. Um and then um as far as the uh what else did we do there? Uh, well after that we went to the graves and we went and saw the DeFeo the graves. DeFeo graves. All, it's like one big grave. For everyone, yeah, yeah. A one big headstone, one headstone with every, yeah. and and we'll show you guys the pictures of that. But yeah, I'll throw those up. And yeah, that I think was I have some video of it too. That was really, uh, that was crazy being there. We also <laughs> checked out the Butterfuco House. Yeah, you know, it has nothing to do with Amityville horror, but and when you see the graves, like it's it's one thing, like you see these movies and you get kind of wrapped up in it, and it becomes like you know, it it it, it has a fictitious feel to it. But when you go and you see the grave Mm -hmm. and you realize and you remember, wow, like six people were murdered by a family member that they trusted in their sleep. Like that's the ultimate sign of trust is to sleep with somebody near you because they can do whatever they want to you to be betrayed like that, you know? Yeah. And that's what this is. That's what all this Amityville shit really is about. It's about these six people that got killed. Yep. And... Not only were they killed by somebody that they trusted, but then the story never dies because they, uh, you know, I mean, in, in, for lack of a better term, they, they exploit the death of these people. You know, the Lutzes, I believe, yeah. you know, at least partially exploited it. Um, every film, and, I, and I don't, I'm not saying that's necessarily a bad thing. Yeah. But at the bottom of all this, all this folklore and, mystery and you know the 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 scariness of it and all that at the bottom of that some people got killed and like murdered yeah it's all based brutally. on true events yeah you so, know and you feel that when you go to the and that's how i felt when i when i was at the grave i was like wow like I, I felt a little shitty you know that i was so fascinated it's like those people that wear those serial killer shirts you know what yeah, i mean like Manson, charles Manson, yeah like, don't wear that stupid shit fuck that guy you know what I mean? Yeah. He fucking killed innocent people. You know what I mean? I mean, the Manson thing, though, I mean, he didn't kill anybody. No, fuck that. He killed people. He did? Well, I mean, he didn't kill those people, yeah. but he sent people to kill him. Okay. I mean, look at how everybody, like, loses their mind over that Tim Lambesis guy. Yeah. Because he tried to hire somebody to kill. Nobody even died. Oh, yeah. He's back out on tour and everything, huh? Yeah. Hey, matter of fact... You know, I'm talking about 2004 when I went on that uh-huh. to the Amityville. That's the band we were opening for. Oh, no was, way. As, as I, I Lay Dying. dying. Yeah. It oh, was wow. us, um, Ragman, which is all the members of Madball, just with Jorge with, singing. Okay. And then, um, um, who as, I just said, As I Lay Dying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Oh, cool. Okay. It's funny, funny little coincidence there. Yeah, that's cool. But look how everybody, like, shits on that guy and try to, like, you know, try to cyber fuck him. For what he did, which I'm not saying they shouldn't, or right. I'm not saying he shouldn't, you know, he did his prison time stuff. I mean, he did, stuff. he did time, yeah. But how is that, how is he a big son of a bitch? And then Charles Manson is a, a fucking folk hero. That is, it is weird to think about. Yeah, fuck him. And, you know, it's really Night weird. Stalker and all that, fuck him too. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's that my thought. That could be a whole separate episode in itself. What's that? The serial killers? Yeah. Oh, we'll get to him. Yeah, yeah. Because we got to get our dude Gary in here to talk about. We know the guy that... Yeah. Oh. That arrested him. Yeah, he was in that team. Yeah. yeah. Arrested the night stalker. Yeah. But yeah, you know, so stay tuned. Stay tuned for that, definitely. <laughs> but yeah, you know, like But you felt bad like at the graves. Like it just became more real, just like yeah, realistic. Yeah, like, it's not you know, I can't say like I felt bad. I just you know, I I, I felt a little exploitive, you know, because I'm because to sure. me it's like, you know, it's interesting, you know, but but only a little bit. Wasn't hmm. like, you know, I sat out there and had some kind of Buddhist epiphany or something. No, you know, you were there with me. Yeah. So yeah, it was definitely uh, 
it brought everything like to life like oh whoa again but it's still brought it, it is still it. sort of entertainment you know yeah. it's hard yeah and i guess you know you it's have to, to separate that you have to look at it as like i guess in a way their memory is carried on you know but who cares if you're gone you're gone right <laughs> but yeah um i don't know man the uh and then yeah after that we went down and Saw the Buttafuoco house. Yeah, Joey Buttafuoco. That was fascinating too, because um, I was in the military when that happened, or I think I think I had just gotten like Korea to like, or I was over. I was deployed somewhere. I don't remember if I it was it was there or the Middle East, but I was deployed either when that happened or when she got convicted. Mm-hmm. I, I can't remember, but anyway, that was a story that I was real familiar with. Yeah. So to go see that house where she shot her. Yeah, walked porch. up to the porch, yeah. rung the doorbell, she opened it, fired. Yeah, so Amityville, and that little Amityville, and that wasn't necessarily Amityville, but it was very, very close. Yeah, I'm not sure if it was another Still county long. name or city name, how they do that, but it was, what, it maybe mu- five or ten minutes away? If that. Yeah, yeah. so I mean, I just kind of called it Amityville, but it, yeah. yeah, we could be wrong. It could be a different, you know. I, it was Long Island, because yeah. they called it the Long Island Lolita. Yeah. But Amityville is Long Island also, so. yeah. Yeah, I don't know, man. I just know that uh, it was a trip to see. It was. You know? It was. And then no neighbors bothered us at either house, you know, at the Amityville one or, or at the Buttafuoco one. It was at night, but still. And even in the day, because we yeah. kind of hung around that. We kind of creeped out up there mm-hmm. for a while. Yeah, hung and out behind on that road, behind the... One neighbor the, actually came up and was like talking to us like, oh, yeah, that was the house right there. And, yeah. You know, normally you would expect people to be really pissy about it. Right. Because they've had decades yeah. of... Just nonstop nonsense. Yeah. And at people that house. still continually drive by there every day. Yeah. I don't know if it's as much as like the Stephen King house that we talked about in the first episode, but you know, people are constantly driving by it. Yeah. I'm thinking, yeah. I would I would think so. Yeah. Every time I've been there, which is twice. Yeah. Um, there's there's cars driving by it and trying to take pictures and Yeah, not just like people that live there, uh, you know, people yeah. that want to see it. But you know, you gotta understand like I don't understand these people that buy a house like that and then fuck off whenever people come want to come and take pictures. Like, why did you buy this house? Don't get me started on the Goonies house. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the bro, your your uh, Brolin homeboy's house, right? Yes. Yeah, we went Josh. to that house. Josh Brolin. Yeah, the yeah. son. No Country for Old Men. Yeah, I love that movie. Yeah. Love yeah. it. We went to that house and we were like one of the last like groups of people or whatever before yeah. they closed it off where now they won't let people go to the not Goonies even go house. up to the driveway i don't think it's like a drive it's like a rock road up yeah. to a couple houses so we we definitely got in time yeah and we got to see it the neighbors took that lived, some, they were cool we took yeah. some good pictures and yeah. everything but now you know no the, the new people who bought it are just not feeling it i don't give a i'll go fly the drone up their <laughs> ass see how they like that yeah. they put like tarps over it to like hide it and everything yeah. so um and the Halloween house. The Halloween house is in uh, L.A., mm-hmm. real close to the Nightmare on Elm Street house. The mm-hmm. Nightmare on Elm Street house, I went by there, um, I don't know, about a month and a half ago when I was in L.A., yeah. and they're remodeling it. It doesn't look the same anymore. And I had just been in there, been there in like September or August, and it still looked exactly like in the movie. Damn. But now they're changing it, and uh, the rumor is because they're sick of people coming by taking pictures. Well, yeah. Then don't buy the fucking Nightmare on Elm Street house. You know <laughs> right. what I mean? Pick another house. The Halloween house, that fucking guy, he sits out on his porch, and if he sees you walk up and down the street like two or three times, he calls, and they got like a private security. And this dumbass security that? guard came up, pulled up on me, shined this big light on me, and mm. once I realized it wasn't a cop, I fucked him off. <laughs> you know? It's like, dude, turn that shit off. You yeah. know? Like, if, if, if you think I'm doing something illegal... Then I advise you to call the police. Was it like a Don't, Paul Blart situation? Just like a security? You know, he, he was just doing his job. Yeah. But like, why, you know, why do you fucking own that house? I don't get that. If you don't like Halloween fans, you know? Yeah. That's why you would buy it. Because you're excited about it and want people to see what it. What do you expect, man? You know? Yeah. I don't know. Me and you would totally buy something like that if we could ever do that. Dude, and if I, uh, if we, invite, you know, everybody in. And When that Amityville house went up for sale a couple of years ago, I was like, man, like, you know, is there a way we could swing this? I know. Can we win the lottery? Can we do something and buy this house? You know, like sell this one? And <laughs> I don't know. I thought about it. 
But there's a few major problems with that. Number one, you can't get me to live in New York. <laughs> you know, if I was going to live in New York, it would be upstate. I I've love spent, upstate. Yeah. yeah and upstate's cool, but, you know. I, you would not live in the Amityville house. Well, I'm not saying I wouldn't, but if I. Because I'm not living there alone. <laughs> well, if, if, if we could have that house, there, well, there's two problems. Number one. We wouldn't be able to have jobs because I am I'm not driving in that traffic. Yeah, there's you know? no way. There's no But even no Long chance Island is a traffic y. I know no. New York is, but we wouldn't be going over that way. Yeah, no, it's it's not that bad in yeah. Amity, in Long Island mm-hmm. or at least you know, that section. Yeah. But you can't get out of there without going through New York true. traffic. True, true, true. So you know, it's a tough call. <laughs> a real tough one. Yeah. Um and then the property taxes there are crazy like seriously like over a thousand dollars a month so it's like okay well yeah. i'm not used to that shit yeah our property taxes here are very you know yeah. manageable shout out vegas right but yeah the amityville house is oh. so it, which it's you know nice. then and you saw exactly what happened we missed our damn flight because we yeah only left you know five hours before we were supposed to fly out <laughs> and got totally stuck we were obsessed with the amityville situation i, I didn't want to leave man. I know. it was so fun it was like yeah it wasn't just like fun it just it was magical you it know, really to be, was to feel the presence and then to go around and see that boathouse mm-hmm. and the neighbors were cool and just to be able to walk that same exact yeah, path that he thinking, walked yeah just thinking just about weird, it weird creepy cool vibes it was it was creepy in that park at the end of the street yeah um but one good thing did come out of it, uh, us missing the flight, is we got to go to Scranton. <laughs> PA, yeah. yes. So we got to go see all the office locations. Yes. We found the sign. That, I know we uh, have some office fans listening. We have well, to. better, if not, get the fuck off our podcast. Yeah, like, come on now. Come yeah. on. If you don't like the office, like, how we, yeah. you know, we can't be friends. Sorry. It was crazy. <laughs> like, the sign, like, the welcome to Scranton sign, you know, that's in the played in the intro, yeah. was in the mall. Right. That was kind of trippy. I got to throw those pictures up here, huh? Yeah. So people can complain that we went off topic again. We, I got hey, like so many complaints. Sometimes like, it happens. Yeah. People are like, oh, you know, it was really interesting, but you, you guys went off topic. It's like, well, okay, dude. Like, <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Like, <laughs> this is a, you know, we're not just here to tell you to spend, like, why would you listen to us talk for an hour and a half about a movie when you could just watch the fucking movie in an hour and 15 minutes? Right. You know what I mean? Ain't like, nobody got time for that. Yeah. You want to hear a little bit of other stuff. Right. Hopefully. Yeah. So. Scranton was fun. Scranton was cool. And remember they yeah. had like um, in that mall, it was the Steamtown Mall, right? It was. I mean. It wasn't called it, that. But, right. But, but that was the Steamtown Mall. Mm-hmm. And um, like there was um, that bulletin board that had the different like like Kevin was going to be there a certain day and then yeah. Andy was going to be there for some autograph yeah. session or something. It was just really cool. That was cool. so cool. Scranton was super cool. We were like, okay, so that's like the silver lining. You know, yeah. like, okay, cool. We're stuck, but we're here. Yeah. So we got to spend an extra day out there. Yeah. Um, that was cool. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. So, so overall, that trip was amazing. It was definitely cool. Yeah. I want to see if somebody, I'm really hoping somebody finds the ghost in my picture yes. that Coleman found. I, I hope so. Because me and you have looked and we're, we're just not seeing it here, I, Lloyd. I can't find it, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody gets that reference, I love you. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, we're at about 42 minutes already. So oh, we better sh- cut this shall out. Shall we sign off? Yeah, we're trying to, trying to streamline our... We want you guys to listen to, to it all and not get too... Uh, to get, yeah, get it too long, we're trying you know? to we're trying to cut like the streamline yin yang out. <laughs> the yin-yang. Yeah. So uh, the next one is going to be, um, like I said, you got to watch. Right. What the, do we say? It will turn their brain to shit, or is it? I'm going to go on a limb and say it's going to turn your brain to shit. Okay. There we go. Definitely. There you um, go. The next two, because uh, you know what the the, the other one is. Yes. Trying to give everybody Yeah, the, I know that the next two we pretty much know. Put it this way. By, say, episode six, you'll have a sample of all the different types of things we're going to do on our show. Yeah. On the we, 85 We like to show. dabble. Yeah. So now you see the, you know, like the the narration, because we are going to do some, some uh, like like this, there was a real crime that happened with this. So if there's something that really mm-hmm. happened, some true, some true story stuff. We might just narrate it just to cut yeah. it down. But um, yeah, there's the next two episodes 
are going to be very different than the first two we already did. Um, but yeah. they're going to be very interesting. Guaranteed. Switch it up. Keep you guys yeah. on your toes. So you please, know? please get on our uh, YouTube. Please subscribe so you can get a notification. Um, yeah, check us out on Instagram. Instagram. 85 Grave. At 85 Grave. Um, what else do we have? Facebook at 85 Grave. Nobody goes on that, but. <laughs> Facebook. Yeah. Zuckerberg. Or nobody goes on our Facebook anyway. <laughs> right. People are on Facebook, just yeah. not on ours. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then uh, what else? We got a Twitter, but it's not really popping. Mm-hmm. Tweet, tweet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't understand Twitter still, so whatever. But we have it just till we have the URL. Yeah. So Gotta get it all. Gotta definitely, get all definitely uh, get us on iTunes. Yeah. Get us on Podbean. Get us on Spotify. Whatever you're. Uh, I think we're on Google Play also. I can't. I can't figure that one out. <laughs> but we are on there. Yeah. Wherever so, you guys listen, check it out. Definitely check it out. But uh, we really appreciate you guys. Definitely. Um, shoot us some ideas. Shoot us uh, if you got some ideas of some shows you want us to cover. Anything at all. We even want if, to hear yeah. from you. Even if it's something that I just put up on YouTube. It doesn't have to be something we do in the actual podcast. Um, start, you know, check out our, when you check out the YouTube, you'll get a, an idea of some of the stuff that, that we do. Um, and uh, Sweet. what else? Yeah, please subscribe to the YouTube. Um, yeah, and share away if you're feeling, uh, feeling frisky. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, share it. Tell people about it. Tell your mom, your dad, whoever. Yes. So, all Tell right. your dog and cat, too, <laughs> just in case. I don't know. All right, you guys. Well, till next time. Till next time. Real. It's going to be uh, probably another few weeks because I'll be gone for a few weeks. Yeah. So. They're probably like, again? Why yeah. aren't you just gone? <laughs> well, here very soon, like I kind of got into earlier, very soon. Our equipment and our studio will be streamlined. I've literally had to replace all the mics, the the audio <laughs> units, um, or the uh, interface, the the cameras, everything. So we've done technically three episodes, and on all three, all the equipment is, is <laughs> brand new because everything just keeps fucking up. But it'll stabilize, and um, you know we'll be able to get our shows out a lot quicker because even though. Uh, like this one, for example, mm-hmm. we were really working on it for weeks. We have been, the, yeah. You know, and and yep. the next one, I've really already started working on it. Yeah, just yeah. the footage and everything. So yeah, behind the scenes, we're always like working on this and like you know figuring stuff out mm-hmm. what we want to do. So we just want to give you guys like awesome content that you guys enjoy. Yeah, and we want to start doing it more regularly. You know, once we get on, on on schedule. Yes. So, okay. But well, yeah, thank you guys. Thanks again, and we will catch you next time. Oh, uh, yeah. Later, y'all.